Rob Porter, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hey, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Northern Idaho. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about gamification in corporate learning. This is a really fun topic and not just because we're talking about gamification, um, but because I think it's it's a fun way to um, think about learning and development within organizations uh, and really to reframe the, our approaches to it. And of course, this is your expertise and I appreciate you taking the time to share your background and experiences with me and my audience. As we get started, I wanted to share Rob's bio with everybody. Rob Porter is responsible for developing and executing corporate communications, market programs, market visibility, and positioning strategy to expand COSO's market share in e-learning. Rob has a successful 25-year track record in industry, excuse me, in instructional design and e-learning programs, as well as authoring and presenting on a variety of corporate topics and learning techniques. During his career, he has built hundreds of hours of e-learning content, workshop curriculum, webinars, presentations, and multiple custom learning platforms for his customers. He has supported hundreds of enterprises by designing and deploying custom learning solutions, which deliver content to millions of learners. He has developed state-of-the-art learning programs for organizations such as BMW, Nike, Nikon, um, or Nikon, Johnson, or excuse me, Johns. I'm going to just start that over. Uh, he has developed state-of-the-art learning programs for organizations such as BMW, Nike, Nikon, Johns Hopkins, Microsoft, Domino's, and many others before joining Coso Cloud, Rob founded and was a principal at Training Objectives Corp. Uh, Rob, a pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Uh, you know, as far as uh, you know, my background goes, it's it's pretty dynamic. Uh, I think at a core, I just like to make stuff. I like to build things and solve problems. So my role here at Coso fits nicely into that. And so, uh, you know, look, look forward to some new challenges moving forward. Yeah, very cool. And why don't you start by just telling us a little bit more about COSO? So sure. ob obviously you have a huge um, level ex of experience and expertise uh, and background in the e-learning, uh, learning and development space. Tell us more about COSO generally, and then we can get more into specifically into the gamification topic. Absolutely. Happy to. Uh, so, you know, COSO completes the learning solutions for enterprise and government organizations. You know, we we really focus on getting the customer to the finish line. A lot of the out of the box virtual learning, learning management solutions, you know, don't always meet the organization's unique goals. You know, every organization operates a little bit differently. They have different cultures. They have a different voice. Um, so what we do is we enhance both the, the learner and the management experiences to perfectly align with the goals and expectations of our clients. So you know, we focus on areas of enhanced security, integrations, uh, appropriate workflows, engaging virtual experiences, and uh, all in all, at the end of the day, we look at completing the solution for our our clients. Yeah, very cool. So let's now dig into gamification. Sure. Uh, it's a topic we've explored on the podcast in the past, though it's been a while since we've last discussed it. Um, so some people are familiar with that, this concept of gamification, but I, I suspect many aren't. Uh, so let's start there. Um, describe gamification for us. What does that mean? Does that make does that mean making um, a game out of our learning and development, or what does that look like? And then we can get into what that can actually mean for our current L and D efforts and how we might adjust them and and reprioritize or strategize moving forward. Yeah, that's a great place to start. You know, gamification and in, in corporate learning really refers to using game design and elements, mechanisms that are applied to what are typically a non-game context. Your training, it uh, could be a classroom, could be virtual, could be self-paced, whatever the case may be. In cases like employee training to perhaps increase engagement, uh, we might look at customers and partners to help motivate them. At, at the end of the day, uh, we realize that that we're looking at training and transferring knowledge to humans, and you know what what motivates them. And we look at you know how how individuals operate, um, you know how they learn and how they retain information. And so, really, at the end of the day, it's a matter of uh, increasing our learning outcomes by really connecting with that audience, and in this particular case, through gamification. 
Yeah, good. So let's describe some of those types of game elements that can be, then be incorporated into a tr more traditional kind of learning and development kind of a program or experience. Sure. Sure, absolutely. And, and there are different approaches and there are different points of the learning journey where we make this gamification connection, right? So if you think of a, a learner's journey, uh, first and foremost, they there is a need or they have a need or they're told there's a need that they need to gain more information, right? So usually there's some sort of experience, whether they're walking into a classroom, whether they're, you know, logging into an LMS, whatever the case may be. So moving for forward, how do they select the right content? Is it already selected for them? And then what is that experience within the content? Then beyond that, it's what happens afterwards? You know, where are the other connections? How do we link this information so that is um, retained and utilized on a regular basis? That could be through other types of engagement. That could be through reward systems. Uh, there are other technologies that are out there that are just absolutely fantastic with you know we look at social learning for for one you know how does that how does that uh, tie in to gamification uh, we also have other technologies out now which are like augmented reality virtual reality simulation based training so all of those looking at those technologies and truly understanding how individuals retain and gain information we look at combining those technologies and making it as seamless as possible for these individuals to not only gain the information, but really try to encourage them to learn more, right? I mean, that's that's really the goal is we want them to come back. So gamification plays a big role in that. Yeah, and that's when I think of gamification, that's kind of one of those elements. It's that motivational factor as you build in these gaming principles and components it's a matter of like how do you keep that motivation going how do you keep them coming back so i mean just think Absolutely. about you know, not everyone listening maybe plays video games but you know lots of people play video games and it's easy to get sucked in to where you, you know you're playing and then all of a sudden two hours have gone by and you're like where did that last two hours of my life go um, right. how does that happen right well it's right. Th there's there's ways that game designers help that to happen <laughs> by the way they design the game and the different components. Um, and so you just described some of those, but as, as we start to think about how we embed those into the learning process in our organizations, we can, we can, it may not be the same as, you know, playing call of duty or whatever game. Sure. Um, but, but it can, it can heighten people's motivation and make them more willing and eager even to come back to continue. And shall I just say that, probably traditionally that has not been the hallmark of corporate learning and education is, right. you know, that this is something everyone's super pumped and excited to go be engaged in. And as soon as they're done, they can't wait to go back, you know, the next time. Sure. Uh, that's not how most people would probably describe it. But when we build in gamification components, it actually can make it more that way uh, to the point where people are, you know, truly becoming leaning into that lifelong learning, that constant learning approach rather than just saying, oh, I got to go to the seminar, you know, because they're making me or whatever. But now right. they, they actually see the value. They, they are excited and they get engaged in the process. Right. They, they and, and I think part of the part of the aspect, too, is when you're a player in the game, you're part of that game. You belong to something. Right. So when you belong to something and you realize that other people are also belonging to that, then you're part of a bigger thing and it starts to motivate people as well. And there's different ways for for games. And we also have to look at what are the appropriate games. Right. So, for example, I mean, mentioned Call of Duty. Some people are familiar with the game. Some people may not. Um, when we're looking at uh, a broader audience, we have to look at a a, a broader game that people understand right and and they can comprehend i i, I typically use and when i'm talking with customers and, and organizations about you know how to strategize these things we have to really think about uh who is that audience the question is is what i always come up with will your customers understand the difference between chess and checkers right and here's the here's why i ask this more people understand how to play checkers then they understand how to play chess. So if I take a game that's overly complex and I throw it at a large general audience, they may not all get it. And so my goals aren't met. If I take one step back and make it so that a game 
perhaps has just a couple rules, a couple sets of guidelines, fairly easy to understand. I tend to find more engagement in that because people get it. I can build upon that later on. I can make more games. I can make it more complex and things like that. But it's really a matter of the audience not only feeling um, entertained, which is typically what people think about as gamification. Hey, we're making it fun and so forth. But the thing is also about uh, understanding and belonging to something and so that they feel the need to perpetuate that as well. And that perpetuation comes in the form of learning. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So what do you what do you see as some of the newer kind of cutting edge, cutting edge approaches to gamification? as it's built into corporate learning, now this can be e-learning, you know, sure. virtual learning, but also um, more traditional forms of corporate learning as well. What are some of those, the new cutting edge approaches? You know, some, some of the ones, I mean, just leveraging the technologies that are out there, right? Um, and, and taking things that we already know and are comfortable with and then folding them into these new technologies. So they become, they become, not predictable, but make it easier for people to understand, but put it into a completely new form. Virtual reality is fantastic. It's a, it's a whole new realm of, of possibility there. Simulation-based training is something that we've seen, and, and it's funny because we've seen that far back into, you know, a, a decade ago in, in classroom training. You know, it's like, hey, let's get up and let's do a simulation, let's role play and things like that. But through the technologies that we have now, we can make it more engaging. You know, some of the other things as far as augmented reality, kind of blending that virtual and, and real life environment. So we see some of those, the technologies coming into play, but we also tend to look at within our current work environment where things are pretty hybrid, right? We see a lot of hybrid learning. So how do we, how do we bridge those different modalities uh, in and fold in and kind of nest in a, a common theme of a game in between all those. And I, I find that that is extremely helpful because not only are we looking at uh, bringing the gaming uh, a aspect into it, we're also having people use different tools to gain the same information as a result they're using different parts of their brain uh, to gather that information. They're having, as a result, they're having different points of recall so that they can, they can operate, you know, more comfortably in that space. So those are some of the things that we look at when we're working with these organizations and, and things that I, I think on the cutting edge is really on the technology side. Um, and, and we're also starting to see some AI components come into play as well. So, so which is exciting to see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there, there's so much possibility, I think, when we talk about virtual re reality, uh, when we talk about AI, and some of these technologies and building them into the components. So and, and doing it even in a hybrid fashion. So it doesn't need to just be, you know, your employee sitting at their computer doing this training, or right. maybe on a tablet or on a phone, it, it can be face to face, corporate training that also will build in you know, using VR goggles um, to do different activities, uh, to do the simulation types of activities, to do all sorts of things. You can build in these different technologies into hybrid types of experiences uh, that can really enhance uh, what you're doing. And I think, you know, I, I alluded earlier to the fact that a lot of people don't get super thrilled about being asked to complete a training program. <laughs> and, and why Absolutely. is that? Yeah, Why is right. that? I mean, there's a variety of reasons, I suppose, and as many reasons as there are individuals. But one of the reasons, at least, is that people have had so many bad experiences with training that sucks. That's mm -hmm. really just bo it's boring. Uh, it just it's mandatory. They don't want right. to be there, but they they're asked to be there. They feel yeah. like they have to be there. Um, a lot of times it doesn't even feel that applicable to their job. They don't really see how it's going to help them do their job better. Sure. Um, they're just kind of checking a box, right? And of course, in that environment, people aren't usually going to have a good experience. And yeah. th they're going to end up walking away just feeling, well, that was a waste of a half day or a day or a weekend or whatever, you know, the yeah. design of the program is. 
but it doesn't need to be that way. Like there, you can design really awesome programs where people go and they're like, wow, this is really cool. And they, and they learn stuff and they apply stuff and they, they realize this is going to help me in my day-to-day job, like be better and be a better manager and do things in a, in a different way. I mean, that's the kind right. of training that people actually get excited about. And then they're there and then it builds off itself. So then the next time they're even more excited to go and you can do more cool things than maybe you could have done in the past. So we want to start to build momentum around this 100 percent agree and i think too as far as gamification you know some of those uh the the fears or the um the reasons why people don't want to do the mandatory training it i think if we address some of those concerns head on with gamification we're able to offset them you know, for example, I mean, one of the reasons why people don't like to do mandatory training is because they're no longer in charge, right? They're told what to do, right? And not a whole lot of people like to do that. They love to chart their own path. So one of the approaches could be, hey, why don't we make make this course a gamified course where the individual gets to chart their own course through this knowledge, right? And then providing some of that, that fear and, and kind of null, you know, kind of nullifying some of that fear that they might have or, or you know, apprehensions about taking it uh, through through gamification. So I, I think it's a great way to, to offset some concerns or, or some trepidations that some learners may have uh, and make them feel a little bit more at ease. Yeah, uh, overcoming that learner resistance, I think, is, a, is a, an important part of any uh, training strategy. Uh, you know, as, as I, I remember going through like some of those early um, courses when I was going through my master's program on, on training and development, or when I had some of those early experiences, like these are the types of things you need to be thinking about. And if you're not, guess what? You're probably not going to engage your people very well. And they're probably not going to be terribly excited to be there. And it's probably not going to be all that effective and have the impact that you're wanting to have. Uh, on the other hand, when you when you are thoughtful about this, there are strategies and ways to make sure that that you do engage your people, that they are motivated, that they are more excited to be there. Um, and, and that can produce a lot of really positive outcomes. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the types of things your clients have observed uh, in terms of the, the benefits uh, through implementing gamification in their learning and development in their organizations. Absolutely. You know, and I, and I, I find that uh, within the gamification, there's, there's, there's different camps and different approaches. We talked about mandatory training, but I also see a lot of uh, gamification being directed towards programs that are not mandatory. Right. And so we're looking at in, in a we work with organizations like NVIDIA, Microsoft, Volkswagen, these are great customer use cases. And we find that the gamification positively impacts various different learning programs but more so when the content is not mandatory so we're talking about these these vendors that are uh, supplying training for enthusiasts resellers partners things like that there's not always this mandate that they have to take the training and sometimes there is and sometimes there's a reward system associated with that that itself is a game as well right you it, it's it's a give and take hey you take this course you get something back whether it's some sort of reward whether it's a gift certificate whether whatever the case may be so we see some of the most impact in programs that aren't mandatory technology companies that are offering this training they are using this training, the programs to enrich their their user base. Where we're seeing the impact is, is people are actually coming back. And we look at different points. One is we look at paths that people are taking. So entire series of training on a specific topic. You know, what are people using and what, what are people leveraging to gain the most knowledge? But then we also look at bite-sized chunks of information. So there's two different, you know, there's multiple different ways that people are taking this information. In. And in some cases, the reward system is just a immediate gratification of success, right? They get it, they, they got something, they completed something very quickly, and there was a, a sense of reward. Those games that we use are you know, for lack of a better expression, they're dopamine spikes. We can very quickly get someone happy about completing something, 
right? And then in addition to that, we also see successes in these longer term programs where we're using gamification techniques to build and, and have them feel a sense of progress a sense of accomplishment in that as well. And so there's the short term and then there's a long term haul and there are slightly different approaches. But at the end of the day, we want the, we're finding that these individuals are feeling very positive about it. NVIDIA would be a great example. We've seen since we started working with them, their their uh, audience base has doubled right in a, in a fairly short amount of time and part of that is because there's also bragging rights associated with it so like i said we're dealing with humans right uh and the gamification side of things and and when people feel like they've made an accomplishment they also like to share that people love to share good news right so they share that with their peers and as a result uh they're they're finding that their enrollments are up you know, we're, they're getting more people in different areas that they didn't think that they were going to get. And so those are some of the successes we're seeing by addressing the different ways that people are learning and the types of content that they have to consume. Yeah, excellent. And again, a clear business case for investing in your people, develop, investing in learning and development programs uh, and, and using uh, engaging mechanisms like gamification technologies uh, to try to enhance what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, if there's a clear, you know, you need to have clear objectives for any training, of course. And sure. if you don't know what you want to accomplish, you probably shouldn't be doing the training. And if, and to your point, if you're just like saying, well, I think it's a good idea for everyone to just do this training, but you don't see how it aligns to their ability to develop skills and abilities, abilities, competencies related to their specific job probably isn't actually important for everyone to do. And so be thoughtful about your objectives, be thoughtful about the purpose. Um, assuming that's in place and, and you have targeted uh, training and learning and development initiatives, then the the ROI is usually pretty important clear and the the business case and the impact is pretty clear engaging people more in the process the impact is pretty clear so let's let's make sure that uh we're we're giving the time and attention and resources to this to make sure that we can have that level of impact otherwise what you end up doing is actually wasting a lot of time money energy of a lot of people and wasting and, and ex expending a lot of goodwill from people um when they have to go to crappy stuff crappy right. training programs uh and not only are they not learning anything not only is it not actually helping your business it's just a time suck it's a money suck and and people are going to be more resistant the next time when you try to do something else uh, so let's invest in it properly so that it can be effective a hundred percent. And, you know, I, I suggest that, you know, anyone who's looking at establishing the gamification within the learning program is compartmentalized what their goals are, right? Are we looking at increase in engagement, motivation? Are we looking at better retention? Uh, are we looking at trying to personalize some of this experience? You know, you know, is it could be improving performance and productivity? What are those goals? And then from those goals, then gamification could be used to, you know, to motivate people to complete tasks, to achieve goals, to be more effective, and uh, perhaps even take things un under their own control. Like they, they want to be able to drive, you know. Uh, but you're right, setting these clear objectives and providing, giving the learner provide regular feedback and some sort of reward process. That's in general the gamification concept, right? It, it's and, and and we also have to understand what motivates these learners. Like what's going to drive them? Are they going to, are they a Best Buy employee and they want, uh, maybe there's some sort of reward system that there's a badge or a pin or some sort of recognition, uh, gift cards, you know, what is it? Points, you know, that's another thing within learning platforms. We work with Adobe Learning Manager and there is a gamification component to it that is a point driven system that also utilizes badges are those components that will help motivate the individuals right so overall i think you know kind of delivering a a deeper level of information through gamification can be highly effective right and and engage and motivate these learners to you know meet your goals and and improve performance and productivity yeah well said rob Rob, this has been a real pleasure. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you and find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. 
Absolutely. Well, so how to contact us, uh, easy enough to reach us out on online. Uh, it's uh, cosocloud.com. Uh, you could also reach me uh, through email at robert.porter at cosocloud.com. Uh, you know, finally, what I'd like just like to provide is, is you know, looking at a, a professional utilizing uh, gamification, utilize it by using visual aids, encourage interaction, set clear objectives, provide great feedback, and use your storytelling expertise to help guide the learners through their journey. So I appreciate your time. Thank yeah, you very much. Thank John. you, Rob. Thank you. And I encourage my audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Rob can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. They can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great 